The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. I remember when this story took place. It was a Yid in Barapak who was arrested by the FBI. He did some type of a white-collar crime. And the prosecutor finally had a from a Yid that he can prosecute. And he was going at it. And he was going to have a Zav splash. And he was going to go after the guy. The guy was going to put him away for life. He did a white-collar crime. He didn't, he, didn't, he didn't kill anybody. He didn't hurt anybody. He didn't rob anybody. No, a Yid is going to get him. And this Yid went to his got lawyers. The lawyer said, listen here. I know you didn't do all these Averis. Maybe you did one or two of them. But this guy's out to get you. I'm telling you that you're looking at minimum 25 years, maximum life. This guy wants to put you away for life. Maybe with the Rachmanus of the judge, you'll get 25 years. And you're going to get at least a million dollar fine. Now, in those days, there were maybe 10 millionaires by the Frum Oilam. Today, you have thousands of guys that are millionaires. Every house is worth a million dollars. Not a big deal. But in those days, a millionaire was unheard of. A million dollar fine? Who had a million dollars to pay a fine? It's not, not a year. And the guy says, I'm just telling you, we're going to fight the case, we're going to help you, but it's not going to happen. So he came, to, someone told him that the eights for you is, is to go to the Ribnitzer Rebbe. He, he has the hands, he, he controls, he has better bunch on the Abbot Mofsen. So this Yid went to the Ribnitzer Rebbe, I remember when it happened. And the Ribnitzer Rebbe took the Yid in very warmly, and he listened to the whole story. And he told the Yid, you think that two Goyim are going to decide what's going to happen to you? The Rebbe decides what's going to happen to you. And I'm giving you a brocha and haftocha that you're going to be fine, everything's going to be okay. So the year told the Rebbe, I know that I have to do something today that I should win. How am I going to win? So the Rebbe told him, you're going to listen to me, and if you listen properly, you are going to be saved from everything. So the year said, I'm ready to do whatever the Rebbe tells me. So the Ribnitzer Rebbe told him that he should prepare before... The, the court case, he should take a copy of the of the vidui of Yoyim HaKippurim, Hoshamnu Bagadlu Gazalnu, and the al and he should learn up the Pshotim, and understand everything what it means, and then he should take it on paper, copies of paper to court. And when the prosecutor starts to talk, you should start saying vidui like it's Yoyim HaKippurim. But not stop, say vidui, jim, 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 jim. Say it, cry, mean it, talk to Hashem like it's your life, like you're getting, this is your last chance. And if you do that, I'm maftiach you that you're going to come out, noki mitzorazu. Came the judgment day, and this yid came to court, and he came with his papers, and the prosecutor got up, and the judge called him up and said, Prosecutor, you have a problem with this guy, let's see what you have what to say. And the prosecutor took out his big folder, notebook, mamazetz, a file that he had, and he started to go, and he started to darshan, how this guy, and he did this aver and that aver. And he does this and that, the whole story, and exactly what he did. Mamish has made it into Zab Binyan Otsum. And therefore, he deserves to get life in prison, and he deserves to pay $5 million knas, and he, he went at it for an hour. Meanwhile, this Yid took out his papers, and he started saying Vidui. And he totally zoned out of the prosecutor. He had no idea what was going on in court, what the guy was saying. He starts talking to Hashem. Hosham nu, and he starts crying. And bitter tears are falling out of his eyes. And he's sobbing and he's shaking. But God knew, and he's thinking of the Pirish Amilus, and the Pshot and what it means. And he goes through the whole Hosham nu, and this, the pages are getting sopping wet from tears. And he went to the al one after the other, and he's crying away. And then finally he's about to finish and he, out of his trance he hears a zetz. He looks up 
and he sees the judge has just banged his gavel. Prosecutor finished speaking, and now the judge wants quiet in the, in the, in the, in the courtroom, and he figures now that they're going to call the defense lawyer, and he's going to see what his lawyer says. Before the judge calls the defense lawyer, the judge addresses the audience. And the judge says, ladies and gentlemen, today we've had a court case, and the prosecutor laid out all the crimes that this man did. And every person in this room had their eyes on the defendant. And they were watching the defendant. And we all saw what we saw in the courtroom today. I've been a judge for over 50 years. In my life, I never saw a person as remorseful as this defendant was today. He was so remorseful. The tears were flowing out of his eyes. Look at his papers, they're sopping wet. He feels so bad for what he did. And therefore, I want to tell everybody my feelings. Why do we punish someone? Why do we send them to jail? We send them to jail that they should realize that they did a crime. They should become remorseful. And it should be a deterrent that they should never do the crime again. Ladies and gentlemen, this man is already there. This man has already gotten to the point of remorse like we never saw in our lives. This person probably would never do a, a, a civil crime, any crime, a, a traffic ticket he probably won't do anymore. He's so remorseful. And there's no purpose in putting him in jail. There's no purpose in giving him a fine. And therefore, I rule, and he bangs the gavel down, that this man is free to go. He's done everything he needs. Have a great day. You're dismissed from the courtroom. And everybody got up, and it was quiet. And there was one person in the room that was exploding. And that was the prosecutor. And he ran to the bench, and he was red and purple, and he was, steam was coming out of his nose and his ears, and he was so mad. He worked for the last six months to a year, building a case, exactly how to put this year away for life. He thought he's going to have it in the papers tomorrow with Machen Ashen Blotter from this year. And of all the years, we're going to put all a bunch of thieves and all a bunch of this and all a bunch of that. And the tables turned. And everybody saw what happened in the thing. And he went to the judge and he says, never is there any, been any case where a judge has allowed someone to get off before even the defense had a say in the matter? What kind of business is this? And he started screaming at the judge for 20 minutes. And the judge was quiet the whole time, and he let the prosecutor vent. And then afterwards, he says, the judge tells the prosecutor, I guess you weren't listening to what I said. I didn't say he didn't do the crime. I said he doesn't have to do the time. I said he doesn't have to pay the, the knas, because he's remorseful. Have you ever met someone that's remorseful? You know, it's not easy. The Yid came back to the Ridna Tzareba, and he brought some Lekach and Bromfen to celebrate his victory. And the Rebbe tells him, you know why you won? He says, no, I won because the Rebbe gave me a bracha. He says, I'll tell you why you won. You know, people have harata, they do tshuva, they say vidui, haziva sachet, but most of the time, it's milchutz. It's just superficial. It's not real. It's not from deep within. They didn't shed a tear. They said, Hashamnu, eight times, nine times, al Did they shed one tear? No. They said everything, clapped a bunch of times. But were they remorseful? Did they really feel bad that they hurt HaKadosh Baruch Hu by doing an Avera? Eh. But you, you weren't saying I'm sorry to the judge. You weren't saying I'm sorry to the prosecutor or to the United States government. You were saying vidui to Hashem. And when you said vidui to HaKadosh Baruch Hu with your ganze hearts, and you really, really did tshuva on all your averis, you became clean. And if you became clean, there's no purpose for you to get any punishment anymore. And that's why, you came out winning. And that's a message for all of us. That if we want a good year, we have to really take it seriously, our tshuva and our vidui and our aziv v'sachet. It's not just to promise Hashem, I promise you I'm going to try my best, I'm not going to do it anymore, I'm not going to do, go there, I'm not going to do that. It's it's just saying it. 
We have to really, really feel it. We have to really feel bad. And if we do that, we'll also get that bracha. We'll also get that good year. I mean, there's nothing wrong. There's nothing as great as getting a bracha from the Rebbe Zerebbe. It helps. And it does the trick. Well, the Maisa, there's no more Rebbe Zerebbe. You can go to his caver. But you, you got to do it on your own. You got to be remorseful. That's what is the trick. And Avada, once we know the trick, we have to utilize the trick. We have to taka, get the siyat of the shmaya and, 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 and do real tshuva. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.